the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, from coast to coast, in every state in the Union, present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. You Bet Your Life is brought to you by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast who now have on display the dramatic and remarkable 1954 DeSoto. First car ever to deserve the name Automatic and the big, beautiful 1954 Plymouth. Your best buy in the low-priced field. Two great names, both great cars, products of the Chrysler Corporation. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Let's have a little humility here now. <laughs> well, here I am again with $2,500 for one of our couples. A lot of money. Man. A lot of money. If any of them say the secret word, the duck will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is light. Okay, Doug. Well, we have a couple of young unmarried people for you, Groucho. They volunteered just before we went on the air. So, Miss Harriet Snookle and Mr. Jack McFadden, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. <laughs> you realize what you're doing to those servicemen out front there. <laughs> well, welcome, doubly welcome, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. If you say the secret word, you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Mr. Jack McFadden and Miss uh, Harriet uh, Schnuckel, eh? Schnuckel. Schnuckel, eh? Schnuckel. That's well, not my difference between Schnuckel and Schnuckel. <laughs> you're, you're very pretty, uh, Harriet. Um, Thank you. Now, what is a Schnuckel? Is that anything like a snorkel? No. You know what a snorkel is, huh? No. That's a fountain pen that breathes on the rink. <laughs> I'll just call you Snooky, eh? No, I don't like that name. You don't like Snooky? What no. about Snooky Ookums? Eh? No, I'm not the Snooky type. Well, are you the sneaky type? Eh? <laughs> no. Are you married, Snooks? No. Would you like to be someday? Yeah. Soon? Yeah. What's your hurry? <laughs> How old are you, uh, kid? 21. 21. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got lots of married yet. And uh, what is your name? Jack McFadden? Jack McFadden. Yeah, it's pretty. I forgot about you. <laughs> well, since she doesn't Don't want to be called Snooky, I'll call you Snooky. Is that okay? Well, call me Jack if you don't mind. <laughs> How old are you, Jack? I'm 21. 21? Uh, say, this may, something may come to this. Here. <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Jack? I'm from Fort Worth, Texas, near oh. the oil fields. Oh. Uh, Texas, huh? <laughs> Where is that? Is that near Neiman Marcus? Uh, <laughs> well, that's the uh, bigger half of the United States. <clears throat> Why did you leave Texas? Well, I came to California. Did you have a banjo on your knee? <laughs> well, a ukulele. <laughs> and I came out here to work for my father who bought the Arrowhead Springs Hotel. Oh. San Bernardino. Oh, see. Father bought the Arrowhead Springs Hotel, huh? Yes, sir. What does your father do? Does he own a lot of oil wells? Well, he's uh, Bernard McFadden, physical cultures. Oh. <laughs> Say, he's, been, all in the, he's been in the public <laughs> prints for 60 years. Oh, Bernard McFadden, the physical cultural uh, enthusiast. Huh? That's right. Well, why don't you sit down and I'll squeeze you up a bunch of carrot juice, eh? Well, <laughs> my favorite drink. <laughs> oh, no, no thanks. I, she might need it, but not me, you know. <laughs> I might break the chair. <laughs> we try so hard to be accommodating here. Well, tell us something about your old man, I mean, about your father. How old is he? He's 84 years young. Well, I think that aptly describes him, too. He is young. Well, he's the president of the Bernard McFadden Charitable Foundation, which publishes the Physical Culture magazine. Oh, he has a foundation? Yes, sir. No wonder he keeps in shape at 84. <laughs> By the way, Harry, do you have any particular ambitions, like uh, hooking a husband? 
Well, that, among other things, at the time, at the moment, I'm going to UCLA night school, working towards my teaching credential. Are oh, you going to be a teacher? Mm-hmm. I'd like to be a high school teacher. Is that so? Mm -hmm. High school. Why do you want to be a high school teacher? Well, I want to teach auto shop. Auto shop? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I swan. <laughs> Why that particular subject? Well, because I'm very interested in cars, and my hobby is driving and building hot rods. Oh. You're interested in hopped up cars, eh? Yes. Well, uh, have you built one of these things yourself? Yes, I converted a stock car into a hot rod. Well, what are some of the things you did to your car? Well, some of the things I've done, I... Um, to your car? To my car. <laughs> <laughs> I boosted the compression ratio. I beg your pardon? I boosted the compression ratio. Where, over the fence? <laughs> what else did you do to this wreck? Well, I, I chopped the top. And you I chopped the top? Mm-hmm. Did a little bit of customizing work on it. Uh-huh. And then? And also, I applied a 75-coat lacquer paint job and a real pretty color, light blue. Now, wait a minute. You painted this thing over? Well, well, you said light, and uh, you and your partner here are splitting $100. Oh. That's 50 for you and uh, 50 for old uh, <laughs> McFadden's son over here. here. Oh. Okay, then. Mm. Peace, will you? <laughs> you lead your life, and I'll lead mine. <laughs> Well, you're a nice young couple, and uh, I think you should get married immediately. <laughs> and raise a lot of healthy little convertibles. <laughs> now you're going to play your bet your life. <laughs> now you pick four of the ten questions I have here. They pay from $10 to 100 The more the question is worth, naturally, the tougher the question is. Mm -hmm. Now it's up to you. Well, seven, yeah. seven, you're starting with a $70 question? Mm -hmm. Patty for gras is a paste made from what? Uh, Talk it over. I think, isn't it? Uh, goose livers, right? Yeah. Goose livers, it's a French delicacy from goose livers? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? You sure? Yeah? What is it now? Goose livers? Goose, goose livers, livers is right. Well, you're on your way. I have $70. You said a French delicacy? It's a Yes, good well, so food. is Corrine Calvert, but we don't... Uh, <laughs> Now, what do you want to try? 80. 80. So up, 80. Yeah, always up. 80. I thought I had a chance, but they're getting real chummy now. <laughs> <laughs> Natives of Hawaii eat a food made from the taro root. It is a paste and is eaten with the fingers. What do they call it? You know, that poi. That's that poi that's poi? so well known, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. You sure? Yeah. Poi? Yeah. Poi, yes, poi is right. Huh? <laughs> no matter, well, just a moment. They had a movie about that some years ago. It was called Poi Meets Girl. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> $150. Now, uh, which question? About 90. Let's do it. Yeah. 60, 60, 90. 90. 90. Wait a minute. I've got, I've got a bet on the third. 60. Make it to 60. 90. 90. Come on now, kids. Make it 60. No, All right. 60. 60. <laughs> All right. $60, huh? Oh. Haggis is a traditional dish from what country? Scotland. Scotland. You'd have had $30 more. <laughs> That's right, Haggis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you now have $210. Ninety. You're crazy Ninety. if you All choose right. him in Ninety. preference to me, huh? Oh. <laughs> and I won't ask you either. Sorry. 90? 90. Do you agree with yeah, this, yeah. Mac? Okay, this is the last question, This right? is the coup de grace. All right, this is the health food, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> okay. What was the food of the ancient gods called? That's Talk it over. The of the gods. That's wine, isn't it? Wine? wine? Is that a food? food, I said. Food. Food, food. Ancient gods. Grapes, then. Grapes. Grapes. Bacchus is the god of... No. I say grapes. No, you're, no. you're flighting with it, but it's ambrosia. Oh, but they did pretty well here. Yeah, they wound up with two hundred and ten dollars. Well, thanks and a happy new year from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And Ladies and gentlemen, this is the world famous tennis club of Palm Springs, California, and this is the beautiful, stylish new 1954 DeSoto automatic. The car planned and built 
to carry out your sudden orders instantly, silently, safely, at all speeds. If your order is a smooth ride, remarkable DeSoto fully automatic power flight transmission will provide unbeatable smoothness and flow. The mighty 170 horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome V8 engine will provide all the power you'll ever be able to use and more. Limitless power on regular fuel with the DeSoto Fire Dome engine. You want a safe ride too. And DeSoto full-time power steering gives you one. Because DeSoto power steering works for you all the time. Does the real work of parking and makes steering as easy as dialing a phone. Tomorrow, go down to your DeSoto Plymouth dealers and inspect this truly remarkable car. The 1954 DeSoto Automatic. Available in two great series. The mighty 170 horsepower Fire Dome 8 and the superb Power Master 6. Remember, DeSoto puts you ahead automatically. All right, George, who's next? Well, Groucho, we have some people with interesting stories for you now. Mr. Peter Paul Ott and uh, Evelyn Bird, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. You're uh, Peter Paul Ott? Right. Which do you prefer, Peter or Paul? Well, I, had a sh I have a short name, it is Ott, and so I put those two names together, and it swings, it has melody. Peter Paul, you sound like a candy bar. That's right. <laughs> where are you from, Pete? From Pilsen, where the good beer comes from. Now, uh, Evelyn Bird, huh, that's you? That's right. Thank Evelyn you. Bird. Say, with that accent and that name, would you be one of the famous birds of Virginia? Yes, I am one of the birds of Virginia. Is that so? Let's see you fly around the room, huh? <laughs> By the way, Admiral Byrd and Senator Byrd, any relation? Yes, they're cousins of mine. They're cousins of yours? Kissing cousins. Well, kissing cousins. <laughs> they all. I think our listeners would be interested in hearing about life among the magnolias and juleps. The South is just charming, and I had a very lovely life in Alabama, too. I had a beautiful marriage in a charming old city, Mobile, Alabama, near New Orleans. Oh, yes. Where we have Mardi Gras. In fact, very few people know that we had the first Mardi Gras of America in Mobile, Alabama. Is that so? That's oh. a very interesting fact, isn't it? And those so Mardi, Mardi Gras was the balls. first place where they threw paper in each other's face, huh? <laughs> That's right. Well, Mr. Art, let's get back to you, huh? Yes. Have you ever been down in the romantic old South? Yes, in Missouri. <laughs> you know, I knew a fellow once from Missouri who got as far south as Washington. <laughs> what sort of work do you do, Pete? I'm a sculptor. A, a sculptor? What kind of sculpturing do you do? Uh, some good ones. <laughs> good ones. No, I didn't mean the quality of them. I meant uh, what type. Oh, any modern. Well, do you make a pretty good living at uh, sculpturing? Uh, in order to make a living, I run a hamburger stand during the summer. <laughs> you sell hamburgers on the side? That's right. Uh, you mean as a sculptor, you have to know your onions to get by. Is that right? <laughs> Pete, I don't understand. Apparently, you're a good sculptor. Why can't you make it pay? Uh, many people have not enough good taste. That's true. A lot of people have very poor taste. And if they didn't, how many hamburgers do you think you'd sell? <laughs> <That's not. laughs> Evelyn, I'm curious. Since you're in California, don't you miss your home and all your old friends and the chitlins and the corn pone and the black-eyed peas? I do miss the South. Mm -hmm. I love California, but I really do adore the South. I love the romance of the South. I don't think I'd hear this romantic Groucho. You know, That's we're true. kind of the clinging vine type. And you I are? tell the men don't like for you to cling. <laughs> well, they don't mind a little clinging, but they like to be... They like to shake you off once in a while. <laughs> Like to do in the south. No, there's not so much. Well, it's unconscious. It's, it's warmer down there. <laughs> well, the time is, is up for conversation. Let's see if you can both make some money here tonight. You're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the big question later. In the race for the $2,500, the first couple won $210, and the secret word is light. 
Let's see how much money you can make. You selected biblical quiz. I'll get down. All right, let's make it. How much? Forty. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. Well, what was the name of the face of the Twelve Apostles? He was their leader and spokesman. Peter? Peter, that's <laughs> right, Peter. Now, what one do you want? How much? Be fair. For the next uh, For the next. For the question. second one, yes. Fifty dollars. Fifty? Is it? All right, what part of an animal did Samson fight when he slew the Philistines? Oh, that's correct. Yes, the jawbone of an ass. Well, don't look at me, kid, huh? <laughs> you now have $90. $50. No, you had a 50. You had a 50? You want a 60, a 90, a 10, or yes. what? 60. 60. That's right. Whose wife was turned into a pillar of salt because of her curiosity? That's, that's correct, and you tell it. Lot's wife. That's right. You have a lot of money now. That's a lot of money. <laughs> $150. Lot's wife was the soul of the earth. Now, which one do you take? $70. Why not the $90? All right, $90. $90. Peter's drunk with power here, huh? $90. You're running amok, Pete. Well, yes, I do. Did you ever run amok? I used to run them in Philadelphia, and they raided me one day. <laughs> $90. Which of the 12 apostles was a tax collector by profession? Talk it over. Your partner, Sean. Who? All right. The fellow who, who I am. Um, Say it quick. Uh, I know. Sean, Sean, Sean. Time is up. <laughs> it's Matthew. Uh, Matthew. I need Matthew. I just yeah. find... Well, you wind up with one hundred and fifty dollars. Well, that's not too bad, is it? Happy thanks, and a happy new year from the Desoto Plymouth Dealers. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. <laughs> Well, we invited some men from the police department to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Glenn Bates. His partner is a young lady from Scotland, Evelyn Hawks. So, folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house, assuming that you have one. Uh, Evelyn uh, Hawks, eh? How old are you, Ev? Well, I pronounce it Evelyn, Evelyn Hawks. Evelyn? Yes, I'm 23. Oh, 23, huh? Where are you from, Evelyn? Evenston, Illinois? No, Edinburgh, Scotland. Oh, Edinburgh, Scotland, huh? No, Edinburgh. Oh, Edinburgh. Well, then I'll call you Evelyn, huh? No, Evie. Oh, Evie, huh? Yeah. Evie, I've always heard that the Scotch are very thrifty. Are you that way? Well, no, they're not thrifty at all. I strongly resent the fact they're always talking about the Scottish people being thrifty. And and all that sort of thing. I mean, Scottish people are very warm-hearted and they're very kind. And every time here, every time there's something advertised, or rather, these commercials go on about go here, this, and go get that. It's very cheap. And, and you see the Scotsman with the bagpipes or something playing, you know, because all the Scottish people buy all these things. And that isn't so. Well, I don't like it at all. Well, I don't like it. <laughs> You're real cute. I think we all have misconceptions about other countries. And I think once we can eliminate that, we'll uh, eliminate one of the chief causes of war. Mr. Glenn Bates, uh, how long have you been standing there? Mm, about three or four minutes. I guess I have to have my glasses fixed. I didn't even know you were standing there. <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Glenn? Los Angeles. Fenneman says you're from the police department. What's your job there? I'm a detective attached to homicide. What kind of a detective are you? I just want the facts, ma'am. Just the facts, huh? <laughs> Are you married, ma'am? Yes, I'm married. I could pull you in on a 412, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious, just how, how do you go about solving a murder? Well, a lot of our murders, uh, we don't have to solve. They, uh... You mean they... You never find them? Oh, yeah, we find them. Uh, we have a, a situation where the uh, culprit is caught at the scene of the crime, that uh, you're speaking of murder. Uh, a lot of times we'll have a suspect call up and say that he just shot his wife, or the wife will call up and say she just shot her husband. Which is it usually? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about evenly balanced. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing, so the sexes wipe each other out that way. <laughs> 
one sex having an edge, huh? Well, you mean they call you up and say, I just shot my wife? And what do you say, congratulations? <laughs> well, with a hot tip like that to work on, you'll probably get the case cracked wide open in six months or so. Huh? <laughs> well, look, uh, Evelyn, uh, I want to ask you some... Evelyn. Oh, Evelyn. <laughs> I want to ask you some questions. Uh... <laughs> I just, I just want the facts, ma'am. Uh, what are your impressions of Americans, uh, Evelyn? And particularly, what do you think of American men? Well, you're not going to like me. But, I, nothing, uh, nothing could change my opinion of you. Yeah. Well, I think they're too fast, you know. They, they don't give you very much time or anything. They want to rush you and they start giving you a great line and lots of talk and everything and you Start with somebody else, and they give you the very same line and the same sort of talk, and you just wonder, well, is he telling me the truth, or just, you know, havering or blethering or something, as, as they are, you know, usually are, and, well, I, I, I just don't know. I, I just don't feel sort of at ease with them, because I just never know when they're telling me the truth. That's quite a problem. <laughs> Would you try me sometime? Uh, well, you wouldn't haver and blather, would you? I might blather a little. I don't think. <laughs> I like to blather as well as the next fellow. <laughs> would you like to sing us a Scottish song, uh, uh, Evelyn? Evelyn? Evie. Evie. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I'll try. Mm -hmm. I love Scottish songs. Ye banks and braes, oh, bonny doon, how can ye boom, say fresh and fair? How can ye boom, ye bonny wee flower, my lassie, say far away from me? Well, that's real. <laughs> I'm going off to Glasgow in the morning, eh? <laughs> You know... For she's my daisy. Tiddle, little, little, little. I just know that you and Will Five used to sing it. Yes, I love it, too. I'm a very bonny lassie, and I'm very bonny lassie. Bonny lassie, she's my daisy. Tiddle, little, little, little. For I'd rather lose my kilt than lose my daisy. It's no use. We were made for each other. Well, enough of this palaver, and, and Evelyn, you're a very nice brand of scotch. You're Thank certainly you. a good egg. <laughs> I hope someday you'll have a whole cellar full of little half pints of your own. Thank you very much. In the race for the $2,500, the first couple won $210. Now we're going to play uh, You Bet Your Life. You know how the game works? Yes, I think so. What about you? Uh... I think I know how it works. But remember, the more the question is worth, the tougher it is. That's clear? Start off halfway. All right. Okay. We'll start on halfway. Halfway. $50. <laughs> $50. Let's see if you can identify one of my pictures. The plot involved a young singer played by Alan Jones and a stateroom scene that involved practically anyone in the cast. What was the name of the picture? Not at the office. Oh, hey, you're too fast, huh? <laughs> You're on your way. You have $50. You have $50. Now, what do you want on your second question? $60 one? $60. Yeah, that's right. A man of many disguises was a star who made the original Phantom of the Opera. What was his name? Lon Chaney. Lon... I thought you came from Scotland. <laughs> you now have $110. Oh, is this a sharp cookie? Now, which one do you want? We have a bigger $60. one? Yes, you can take a bigger one. You can take a $100 one, a 90 anything you want. Let's try for 90. 90? Is that all right with you, uh, Sherlock Holmes? We'll go. Okay. <laughs> Who is Spangler Arlington Brew? B R U G H. Curry Graham. What, what is the name Talk of the name? Talk it over. Spangler Arlington, Arlington Brew. Brew. B R U G H. Talk it over. It's your partner. Mm. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Robert Taylor. Oh, Lord. Robert Taylor. Well, you still have $110. All right. Now, what do you want on your last question? You better try the big one. Is that all right shoot, with you, shoot, uh, Arsene Lupin? Shoot for yeah. shoot the works. <laughs> a famous German actor in 1922 was the first star to win an Academy Award. What was his name? Craig. Talk it over. 
Mm-hmm. 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 M